So we are more than halfway through our Lenten series called Mosaic, when God uses all the pieces. We have discussed how our lives become broken by mistakes or by circumstances. These jagged edges can either cut into our lives or can be transformed into a beautiful mosaic with God's help. So the first week I talked about restlessness. When we are distracted or restless, it can keep us from focusing on our responsibilities to God and our neighbor. The second week I talked about regret. We all have regrets. Some of us regret the mistakes we made in the past. Others regret things that they have failed to do. With God's help, we can let go of our regrets and our life can be transformed into something beautiful. And last week, we talked about rejection. And Jesus knew about rejection. He was betrayed, arrested, deserted by his disciples, and crucified. And sometimes in our own life, we can feel like we are walking through a valley of rejection. But God doesn't want us to stay there. God can transform those feelings and make them into something beautiful. So this week, we are focusing on when God uses our responsibilities. We are created to need one another. We crave community. We come into the world needing adults to take care of us. But unfortunately, responsible adults don't raise everyone. When I was growing up, I had assumed that all parents love their children. That parents provided to the best of their abilities for the physical, emotional, and spiritual support of their children. I assumed that homes were safe places and that the people in those homes cared about a child's well-being because this was how it worked in my family. It wasn't until I was an adult that I discovered that all, not all parents behave like responsible individuals. Once my children went to college, they had discovered that with Tom and I, they hit the jackpot for parents. <laughs> and what I really believe is that the world needs responsible parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles. We have a power to make a huge difference in the lives of children that we come in contact with. One of the best courses I took when I was at the Chatham United Methodist Church was um, a psychologist led a course called Parenting with a Purpose. And one of the things I learned in that course is that there were people having children who had no idea of what they wanted the outcome to be. And that's, you need a plan. And I think, you know, um, our children are all grown, but you can certainly make a difference in the lives of grandparents, and, I mean, in your grandchildren, in your nieces, in your nephew's life. Um, you can have a plan of how you are positively going to impact their life. Again, we need responsible adults parenting the children that are around us today. When God created us, God had the expectation that we would grow up and take responsibility for the earth and those who dwell in it. We begin our life needing someone to take care of us, teach us, love us, and tell us that even when it's dark, it's going to be okay. We need people to live up to their responsibilities and be faithful. And I know that many of you sitting here this morning 
are responsible people. Tom Brokaw has referred to some of you as being part of that greatest generation that knew about responsibility because of the sacrifices you made. Things have changed, and we listen to the news, and we hear more and more stories about adults behaving like spoiled children, that they're having little tantrums. God teaches us responsibility for one another in several ways. First, through scripture. From the beginning of human history, God made us to be responsible for tilling and keeping the land. In Genesis, we read about the creation of the world and human life. In Genesis 2, we read, the Lord took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to till and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, you may eat freely of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of good and evil, you shall not eat. For the day, in the day you eat it, you shall die. After this, God made a helper for Adam called Eve. And Adam and Eve were unable to resist the temptation of eating from the tree of good and evil in sin enters the world. You know, God has made us responsible for creation. Second, God does not allow us to blame others when we make poor choices or sin. What happens in Genesis when God discovers Adam and Eve have eaten of the tree of knowledge? Adam tells God, well, the woman, she gave me the fruit to eat. And then Eve blames the serpent, and then the serpent remains silent and doesn't blame or justify its behavior. God does not allow us to blame others for our bad choices or sin. Three, there are consequences for irresponsible behavior. I wonder if Adam and Eve's story would have turned out differently if they had been honest with God. God, we disobeyed you and ate from the tree. We regret our decision. Please forgive us. I mean, that was an option open to them. They could have taken that option, but chose not to. Every year in the news, we hear about college kids who die from drug and alcohol overdoses. Often their peers can tell that they are in trouble, but they are afraid to call for help because they are engaging in illegal activities. When the call comes, it's often too late to save the student's life. We need to call for help when our life or another person's life is out of control. There are consequences for sin. Four, Jesus teaches us responsibility for each other by commanding us to love our neighbor. Martin Niemöller wrote one of my favorite quotes about our responsibility for humanity. He was a Lutheran pastor who criticized the German intellectuals following the Nazi rise to power and the subsequent purging of groups of people. He wrote, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out, 
because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. We are responsible for our neighbor. Five, Jesus was willing to take responsibility for our life and care. In John 14, Jesus takes a break from the mission field and speaks to his disciples. And he promises them that in life and in death, he will continue to care for them. Jesus says, in my Father's house there are many rooms, and I go and I prepare a place for you. The God of the universe, with all that was happening in Jesus' life, made the case that we belong to God. In John 14, he also tells the disciples that we have an internal GPS, a God's positioning system called the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will guide us. He says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Jesus modeled for us what a responsible life looks like. So I invite you to move into a time of reflection. Let each of us consider our responsibilities to creation, family, neighbors, and strangers. Are any of your relationships broken? And if so, how does it impact your relationship with God? What would it look like to mend that broken relationship? Seek guidance from the Holy Spirit. So like the other weeks, during the hymn, you are invited to come forward you are invited to take a piece of sea glass, and there is markers up here. And if there is some, something that's arisen in you this morning, or there's some kind of responsibility that you feel is broken, take and write about it on the piece of sea glass. And then I invite you to toss it in front of the cross. Leave it at the feet of Jesus. And like the other weeks, I'm going to ask this row to start and go this way, this row to come this way, and if those of you that would like to come up can come around to the back. So you don't need to come up, but if you'd like to do that, you are invited. June? Mm -hmm. 